would say some of, that the studio is trying to understand how the Palestinian right of return has a has a architectural dimension and an urban dimension uh, in relation to the present, to the present condition of the place. Methodologically, what was uh, important is that the studio uh, focuses uh, on discussions that are already been held and narrations, uh, narratives that are already been told. In this way, it's not uh, uh, architectural projects that uh, stand by themselves, but only in relation to uh, stories and debates that already exist. In this way, it was really a crucial part of the studio to understand the issues, the spaces, the actors that are involved in, in, this, uh, in these debates, specifically the right of return. What binds the findings together is uh, how we articulate the right of return. What we learn through discussions with refugees, with our tutors especially, is that traditionally the right of return is considered really as the right to return to the village of origin the right to return to the private house, the private family house, which is probably now uh, in the 1948 areas. And what we try to articulate is the right of return in the different dimension, in its common dimension. And what we mean by the common dimension is that uh, the right of return is related to certain conditions and sites that are held in common by all of the Palestinians, uh, specifically the refugees. And these conditions and sites are we identified uh, the right to the urban condition, which is uh, reflected and embodied in the cities that were destroyed, completely transformed and repopulated, such as Jaffa, Haifa, and Akko. Um, at the same time, it's the condition of the Mediterranean, which Palestine is geographically and culturally a part of. But since uh, the Israeli occupation, the West Bank and Gaza are essentially cut off from the Mediterranean condition. Uh, another aspect of what we call the return to the common is return to mobility, which has to do with the movement, freedom of movement, culturally, economically, throughout the region. And this was uh, especially something that you could see during our field work because you have to travel through so many checkpoints and uh, inspection areas. Lastly, um, the return to the common is... Right, the return to the return to nature, because always uh, in the region there was an important connection with nature, uh, or let's say the landscape, as it related to economic uh, functions, the agricultural functions, but also how the landscape was used uh, uh, by the people who lived there. And actually, there's one more uh, facet to the return that's very important which is the refugee camp itself, because uh, return basically refers to return to the return to the past or return to a different area, but this is not uh, what we're interested in. It's how the return actually can be practiced in the present and how the present is a source of inspiration of how to imagine the return and, uh, rather than the past so much. And uh, the most... Uh, uh, most emblematic of the present condition is the refugee camp itself. And what we found is that in the camp there are different possibilities uh, for already the return to start to take place. It's something that uh, comes up often and it's uh, somehow an obstacle that, uh, that we face as architects because it's not clear what an architect or what an urbanist can, can do in such a context or in this kind of difficult themes. But through the projects, we have actually been able to demonstrate how architect, an architect can operate in two different ways. One way is the traditional uh, design of buildings. An architect drawing a building and proposing uh, that it be constructed in a certain way in order to embody certain values or politics that the clients or the, the people who will use the building uh, desire. On the other hand, uh, there is a great potential for architects as I mentioned at the beginning, to intervene into narratives. And in this case, uh, it becomes very important because uh, it's not always that you have to design a building to have an impact, but that you can perhaps change the way or reorient the way that people are thinking about things that are already happening. 
I am I, Patricia, I'm an architect from Brazil. And in this research, we, what we're doing is looking into the refugee camps in Palestine in this culture that was produced over the 60 years of exile. And we had the opportunity to engage in the reconstruction of the Youth Program Center, which is not another NGO like there are more than 20 in the camp. It's a collective attempt to reestablish this political dim dimension in the, in the camp. And in this case, the building for them is extremely important because it's a very physical representation of their political way. So we step in the constructions in discussing which kind of architectural form could really represent the refugees. And we were discussing if this building should not uh, be instead a plaza that is completely open to the public, but there is a, this paradox that for the refugees, whatever is open is not public. So it has to be closed and it has to be protected. So we got into this building that it has a shape of a stone and from the outside it looks like it's completely closed, but it's actually hollow on the inside. So what we're doing is producing, trying to produce this common space in the camp that is in opposition to the, what we normally see as public and is also in opposition of what is seen as a private, as an NGO would be. And what we also try to show is that it is possible to improve the conditions of the camp with this building without having it, uh, the normalization of the camps and it, without forgetting the political discourses. And it's also what we challenge here is the idea that the camp should be completely erased on the return, but it's actually the, the embody this culture that has to be preserved and has to be remembered. My name is Sanne van der Beemer. I'm a an architect from the Netherlands, and this part of the research deals with the remains of the Ottoman railway network, which was a network that at the beginning of the last century connected Palestine to the larger Middle East. But in 1948, with the establishment of the State of Israel, this network got largely dismantled, uh, but also this was a moment that uh, an ongoing disconnection and fragmentation of the remaining Palestinian territories started. So for the research, we looked specifically at five of the ruins of the former stations. And we found that in all of the cases, their context over the last 60 years has radically changed, mainly due to the occupation. And one striking example of this is the village of Batir that used to be very well connected. But here today, a struggle is taking place over the construction of the barrier wall, which they plan to construct along the railway. But what we also found is that there is a potential for reuse of the ruins of the network. For example, in Jenin, where the station used to be part of a military base, but today it's become uh, completely integrated into a very dense urban fabric of a refugee camp. And here the station that also still plays a very important role in the collective memory of the people, it could be transformed into a common space for the refugees at the heart of their camp. So from these present possibilities for change, we can also imagine a reactivation of the whole network and a reconnection of the Palestinian territories. And this imagination can play an important role within the current discussion on the right of return, as we think that a right of return should not just be a right uh, to go back to one's original property, but essentially as a right to mobility. Hello, my name is Gabriel Coyote. I'm an architect from the United States. This part of the research was looking at how the history of a city and the evidence of a crime can be read from one object, one single object. The single object in this case is a museum called the Etzel Museum, which is a military museum located on the beach of the city Jaffa, Tel Aviv. The investigation about this museum unfolded by assembling an archive of media, an archive consisting of photographs, videos, maps, also postcards like this one, through which we were able to reconstruct the biography of the building of the museum since uh, 1917 through several decades up until the present day. And what we found is that the museum, although when you look at it today, it appears to be a single house, actually brings together three ruins of three different houses um, into one building. And they have been demolished continuously since the 1950s in a very slow, gradual manner. But this, this, this demolition has actually been part of a much larger campaign of destruction a campaign that has aimed to erase from the beach of Jaffa Tel Aviv Palestinian presence. Uh, what this project brings to, brings to the studio, brings to architecture and urbanism, is an archaeological practice in which uh, the traces of the past material remnants of destruction, as we can see them in photographs, are not only a way to read the history of the past, but also a way to imagine and mediate inspiration 
of how the city could be in the context of return. I am Jun Jiren, an architect from China. Hi, I'm Rizky uh, Supratman. I'm also an architect from Indonesia. Here we are investigating about how the landscape is used as geopolitical tools, uh, focusing on this ambiguous function of green spaces such as forests and park, that in the context of Israel and Palestine, these spaces is not only used for recreational and nature reserve, but in the same time also used to expropriate Palestinian land under the guise of creating public space. So, uh, in our research, we take uh, one example, uh, Al Arub Forest, that's next to refugee camp, which is also named Al Arub Camp in Bethlehem, that in the forest uh, transformed many times over decades, and now at the moment the, the forest is kind of giving a new division of the land that kind of uh, shrinking the territory of Palestinian. So now at the present, the Palestinian that uh, before have this, the whole land to be used now because the presence of the forest uh, they only can cultivate or use the space only in the valley. And moreover, we also did a specific investigation about the, the specific uh, plants, which is Aleppo pine trees, that have a kind of characteristic to dominate and destroying the quality of the soil in the territory. Based on this investigation, we found that the pine trees are planted as an aggressive tool of colonization in different ways, like concealing the destroyed villages, destroying the soil in the valley and saving the land from possible habitation. As the counter of this colonization, we propose five elements as the intervention in the size that could stimulate the new biodiversity to the environment and provide infrastructure for people to utilize. And in this way, this intervention could have the possibility to activate the new common practice in the landscape. Uh, somehow we stimulate the activation of how people use the landscape to be a common space again. Yes. That is the provocation somehow here. My name is Sai Shu and I come from China. My research is about the frontier space between Tel Aviv and Jaffa. And uh, the frontier laden with ruins is investigated as a site for a form of politics beyond the idea of state. And uh, when we explore the frontiers there, we uh, find out the, the border is not only a place of separation, but also a place of confrontation and the debating. And also, they uh, gather the most dense ruined property of the city. And uh, there are certain legal ambiguity behind the ruined properties. And uh, they call the absentee property in Israeli law and which relate to the disappeared uh, Palestinian owners. And uh, the ownership and uh, usage conflict on those lands force those properties become a legal voice inside urban fabric. And uh, I uh, try to explore one site as testing ground for the other properties through uh, aerial photos and uh, some old maps. I uh, read its biography carefully and I propose an intervention based on previous research. And uh, we can apply this methodology into other sites. And uh, finally, this activated uh, frontier space become, uh, can extend its function as confrontation into the daily life of the citizens. And uh, contemporary urbanism is highly embedded with political claim and uh, so uh, through our research, we try to uh, explore the opportunity of urban renewal and uh, architectural criticism about uh, politics in architectural scale and uh, urban scale as well. I find there are certain legal ambiguity behind those ruined properties and uh, they, uh, they call the absentee property in Israeli law. Whenever we would take a taxi in the West Bank, they would charge us a very, very right. high rate. But at the end, we, with our very uh, rudimentary Arabic, we could negotiate uh, and something we, a bit more uh, yeah. local rate. Yeah, and we made a friend of the taxi driver, and I saw him several times uh, on the street, and he just picked me up at a very, very low, even lower than the local price, and he gave it to me to take me home. Yeah, that was nice. Thank you.